to you, she's a priceless presenter, Fern Britton. He's a free agent, Stephen Mangan. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, beaten by a Tory, Ken Livingston. Always got a story, Reginald D. Hunter. And their team captain, Lee Mack. And your host, Rob Brydon. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where fibbing is the order of the day. Uh, when they're lying, people fidget awkwardly, they shuffle their feet, and they avoid eye contact. I know this is a fact because the other day I did a stand-up gig to an audience of 2,000 liars. <laughs> We lie the most on the telephone because there's no written record. Uh, Lee lies on the phone all the time. Uh, there's never really a fire, is there, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> and scientists believe we evolved the ability to lie simply because it helps us to get food and sex. I didn't have to lie to get food. <laughs> So to round one, Home Truths is all about the extraordinary, exciting lives of our panellists. Each panellist will turn over a card containing either a true fact about themselves or a whopping lie that they've never seen before. Can the opposing team separate the truth from the fibs? First up, Reg. The D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969. There are a lot of uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and Delicious because... <laughs> <laughs> because uh, at that time in America, affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we would give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And, and delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how th it's, look, it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And, <laughs> and so, um, like the name delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, you, you probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, Fern? Uh, and, uh, there's uh, MC Delicious, uh, um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> Where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And, um... Uh, delicious means, uh, very tasty. <laughs> what was your father's name? My father's name is Homer. <laughs> and what was his middle bit? He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the... 30s and 40s, and it was very tough times for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs, except... <laughs> except as a food. <laughs> well, I think... Uh, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're... Yeah. 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 stupid, but it's true. That. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what does the D stand for in your name? What does the D stand for in my name? None of your business. <laughs> The D in Reg's name does not stand for delicious. I did once meet a person called Delicious, but uh, not sure it was her real name, uh, or if the other girl was really her sister, or if either of them were actually qualified nurses. <laughs> but uh, I will say, if you are watching Delicious, uh, could I please have my wallet back? <laughs> I 
Mangan. Stephen Mangan, you're up next. Yeah, I once guessed the exact number of sweets in a Mini Cooper and was awarded a prize by Britain's tallest man. <laughs> How many sweets were in that, that car? Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember, actually. Oh, when was this? I would have been about 11. Can you give us a ballpark figure? It was something in the sort of 4,000 area, because they were quite... <laughs> they were quite big. I don't think they were... 4,000 sweets in a Mini Cooper? I don't think they were How real big... sweets. They were probably, like, fake big sweets. <laughs> right. What sweet were what they? What tipped you no off idea. to make you think that they was fake? <laughs> they just looked too big for a mouth. <laughs> if they're that big, you said about that big? Quite big, yeah, but I don't know, far oh, about, yeah. So they had massive fake sweets in a mi Mini Cooper. Yeah. I'm very suspicious of your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can't remember the amount, you can't remember the size. <laughs> and uh, where was this? Any recollection of the country? Or... Yeah, 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 it was, a, it was a Brent Cross shopping centre. And I, I won £100. What? That That's was the cool. prize. £100? £100. What year was this? Oh, 80, late 80, 80, 83, something around there. Late 80s and 83. <laughs> Do you know, I, I, one bit of advice, don't ever try and make it in politics. You haven't got a chance. <laughs> and he knows. <laughs> I, I, I sense you're edging ever closer to a, a decision. What are we going to say, Ken? He's lying. <laughs> Not that tough, then. Uh, Reginald? <clears throat> My first instinct to say that that's too fantastic of a story to have ever happened to anybody. <laughs> but then I think you look like you might do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with yeah. I don't know who to go with. Reginald with his suave charm. Or you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Ken here and say that you are, in fact, not telling the truth. You're saying it's a lie. OK. So, Steve Mangan, truth or fiction? It is, in fact, the truth. No! <laughs> Yes, uh, it's actually true. Uh, Stephen did guess the exact number of sweets in a Mini Cooper and was awarded a prize by Britain's tallest man. <laughs> I'm so glad that that story ended happily, considering it had the words car, sweeties and strange man in it. <laughs> uh, Ken, your turn to reveal all. I am the Mayor of London. <laughs> I was the first person in the world to breed the Congolese frog, Hymenochiris curtipes, in captivity. <laughs> <laughs> this, this shouldn't take long. <laughs> David, why? They are the only frog I know that has a prehensile anus. <laughs> and... <laughs> what? You've got an easy attention. Yeah, you've got they, they can turn the anus into a small tube which sprays eggs and, or sperm in just about every general direction. How did you m make them breed? Well, this was... <laughs> he stammered when he asked it. I love that. <laughs> uh, sir, how did you um, <laughs> make, make them breed? <laughs> Everybody else had kept them in tanks with an aerator which bubbled away. And with the prehensile anus spraying the sperm and the eggs in all directions, <laughs> I, if it's bubbly water, they just sink down and nothing happens. They need to stay on the surface film. So it's pure luck on oh, my Oh, because part. of... Not in my wildest you... dreams yeah. did I ever think I'd hear Ken Livingston say anus so many times. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been around on election night. <laughs> <laughs> OK, David, uh, what you, is your so you decision? Think it's, I, uh, I, I think it's a, it's a very clever lie, cos we know how you like amphibians or reptiles or whatever. What is it? What's Politicians. The Politicians. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
You have to reach a decision. Has he what had do you a lie think? yet, or is, is it, it true? Is it true or false? I think it's false. She thinks it's a lie, see? Right. You can't ask members I, of the audience. Of course you can. Yeah. 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 Hands up who thinks it's a lie. Hands up. And, yeah, oh, and who thinks it's a lie? What's this? What's this? It's a load of on this show. What I like, Fern, is we now have a sort of soup song of ready, steady cook about it. So what are you going to say, then? I think green tomatoes have got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're saying it's... I think, uh, the, well, it was more hands up than true. It was more true. I think. I'll, I'll go with it. True. true. You're saying it's true? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Livingston, is it the truth or is it a lie? It's true. <laughs> yes, it's uh, completely true. Ken was the first person in the world to breed the Congolese frog Hymen Ocarus Curtipes. <laughs> have to say, Ken, perhaps if you'd concentrated a bit harder on your transport policy instead of Kermit, you'd still be in power. <laughs> our next round is called The Ring of Truth, in which I read out some celebrity facts, and all our teams have to do is decide if they're true or not. What could be simpler? David's team, take a look at this clip of someone that we can all look up to. Now, years ago, a brill-creamed head looking like patent leather was just the thing for the trendy young man. 1955, Saturday night, off to Tottenham Royal. So it was crash bash, sausage and mash, two kips and a bomb bomb, little dab of do you. Really <laughs> so on the barnet. And then the combination was Old Spice on the German, a little bit of Old Spice, tiddly winky woo, with the brill cream, bees knees. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't mind giving him a punchy wunch in the boat race. <laughs> so here's the related fact then for, for David's team. The Archbishop of Canterbury once endorsed a Cockney version <laughs> of the Bible. Is this possible, David's team? Why would you need a Cockney version of the Bible? It was to make yeah. the Bible more accessible to the man on the street. So... Some blush tomorrow. Stigmata. <laughs> George Carey endorsed it in 2001. The feeding of the 5,000 becomes Jesus feeding 5,000 geezers from five loaves of Uncle Ned and two Lillian Gish. <laughs> Jesus heals a deaf and dumb man is translated as Jesus heals a mutton Jeff geezer who couldn't rab it either. <laughs> oh, please let this be true. Yeah. Again, it'd be great if that was true. Wouldn't it be? Yeah. I'd buy it. Um, I'd buy one of those. You'd have heard about it, though, didn't you? You would, wouldn't you? Chas and Dave would have done a CD. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that clever? The rhyming stuff. Why is that good? You're using language to make it unclear. Say what you mean. Well, say what you do mean. Do you think it was to stop the police knowing what you were talking about? Well, people shouldn't stop the police knowing what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? Yeah. I'd like to believe it, but I think it's a lie. I, it has to be a lie, doesn't it? OK, we'll say lie. You're saying lie. It is... true. <laughs> Yes, uh, amazingly, it's true, and um, I have the book here. <laughs> we don't Adam and Eve it. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me read a bit to you, the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> I, I'm going to hate this, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. You are. Okay, I'll just I'll brace myself. Hello, Dad. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Dad. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Up there in good old heaven. Your name is well, great and holy, and we respect you, Gov. <laughs> we hope we can all have a butcher's at heaven and be there as soon as possible, and we want to make you happy, Gov. <laughs> it is true. Uh, when the book came out, it was a massive hit, which is also Cockney rhyming slang. Which means, at the end of that round, it's David with three points and Lee with two points. Yeah. 
Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists, or, more embarrassingly, is someone from the Child Support Agency looking for Lee. <laughs> this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome uh, this week's special guest, Gordon. <laughs> So, Stephen, what is Gordon to you? Uh, well, this is Gordon. Uh, Gordon and I were in a prog rock band called Aragon, and we recorded an album called The Wizard's Dream. Uh, David, perhaps you'd like to explain your connection. Uh, yes, this, this is Gordon. Um, he works in my local pet shop and recently sold me a hamster that died the very next day. <laughs> Finally, Fern, explain your relationship with Gordon. This is Gordon. He's the subject of my life drawing class and I have painted him naked three times. There we are then. Pretty straightforward. A, uh, a former prog rocker, a purveyor of poorly pets or a nude model. Lee's team, where would you like to start? What, okay. what did the hamster die of? So, uh, what did the hamster die of? I, I, I don't really know, actually. I think, it I was... think we all know, David. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take it back and ask your money back or ask an explanation about why it died? You just brought the man who sold you the dead hamster on the show. <laughs> That's justice. Who, who, who was the hamster for? It was for the godson of some friends of mine. No, no, uh, rather my godson, who is the son of some friends of mine. <laughs> can I, can for, I ask, are you close? It was for God's son. <laughs> 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 for his birthday, I bought him a hamster, and he came down the next morning. <laughs> and the hamster was no longer alive. <laughs> he... Yeah. OK. Stephen. Hello. Could you remind us again of the name of the band? Aragon. OK. And what was the album? The Wizard's Dream. Can you name some of the songs on the album? Yep. In fact, I've changed the question. Name them all without stopping <laughs> the breath. There was The Dragon, which was 15 minutes long. <laughs> uh, Reflections of the Reaper. <laughs> Fool by the Fire. But there were four songs, that's three. Four songs on an album? Yeah, well, one was 15 minutes long. Which year was this? This was the early 90s, 1986. <laughs> How many members of the band were there? There were four at that point. Can you, name, with... can you name the other members? Yes. Do it. Right. <laughs> Let's see where you're going. Charlie Dilks. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> Good old Charlie. <laughs> and Angus Ford Robertson. And Fern. Now, you took you take sketches of this man here. So what you uh Built up from fruit to flowers to his testicles, or...? He started on a ladder and a bit of fabric and paintbrushes and things, and then we moved on to, eventually, Gordon, and he was there for three... three sessions. OK, now let me ask you this. Um, we, we, when did you do this course? Two years ago I started, and I still do them. You still do them? Now, you get up and rush <laughs> off to the studio, you got four kids, and you have whatever extra things you do, and then you have time to go mm -hmm. and paint men you don't know nuts. Well, it's only... <laughs> it's seven o'clock to half past eight. Really? Yes. Really? You're a very energetic woman, Fern. Do all thank that. Thank you. But, don't yeah. say thank you. It's not a compliment. It's an accusation. Uh, so, Lee's team. Is Gordon Stephen's ex-bandmate, David's hamster vendor, or Fern's nude model. OK, uh, what do you think, Reginald? I don't think Fern had a time. I don't believe you would ever try to handle a hamster living or dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's you, because you and this cat here, Gordon, y'all got the same eyebrow. <laughs> And, uh, sorry, Ken, you're going with Stephen as well? Yeah, yeah. So it's Stephen. <laughs> Let's okay. go with Stephen. Uh, Gordon, would you like to reveal your true identity? 
My name is Gordon and I was a guitarist in a progressive rock band called <laughs> Aragon with Stephen and we did record <laughs> The Wizard's Dream. Thank you very much for coming along tonight. Yeah. Cheers. Gordon. Yes, the story was true. Uh, Gordon was Stephen's bandmate. And if you fancy listening to Wizard's Dream, simply log on to iTunes. There's literally tens of thousands of much better albums available <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, David's team have three points. Lee's team have three points. <laughs> Which brings us to our final round called Quick Fire Lies, in which our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. And again, they don't know whether they're about to read out a true fact about themselves or a lie that we've made up and they've never seen before. So we will start with... <coughs> Lee. Last year, I was ordered to leave Blackpool Tower after I threw a sausage roll off the top. <laughs> <laughs> How were you discovered? Did someone see you... Up, Security you, was at the top. And, they... and saw you... Why did you throw it? Well, because I'm a northern. And <laughs> I just thought the bin's over... You know, the bin was, was not it, inside. Why didn't you finish it? Because, actually, I'd already had one. This was my second. I was halfway through it, and I thought, no more for me. Were they hot sausage rolls? <laughs> Do you want, I'll give you the accurate heat of how they were. This hot. <laughs> Why did you throw it off the top? You're there, there's security there. It's a horrible thing to because do. Because someone, how fast is a hot or even quite hot sausage roll going to be moving by no, the time no, it you're hits wrong, David. some no, 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 wasn't morbidly quite hot. obese child I... down on the promenade, having a miserable time on holiday in Blackpool of all places, and then you, he's just heard about the divorce but... of his parents, consoling himself with another load of high sugar snacks, and the next thing he knows, a warmish sausage roll. <laughs> Slap in the face! <laughs> that lady trying to eat the second sausage roll! <laughs> David, let's yes. have a guess. Well, I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't think he would. I think it's a lie. I think we think this is a lie. Yeah. You're all agreed. Yes. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay, Lee. Is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It's actually a lie. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee was not ordered to leave the Blackpool Tower after throwing a sausage roll off the top. As if anyone from the north would waste something wrapped in pastry. <laughs> <laughs> and next, it's David. As a child, at my grandparents' house, I had a little bell that I would ring if I wanted anything. <laughs> Why did you have a bell? Well, there was a bell. It was a pre-existent bell. There was a bell in the house, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. Only at the grandparents' house? Yes. Not at home? Because no. your parents no. didn't play that shit. Yeah. <laughs> at, the ho at home, you just sort of went... And... <laughs> <laughs> so how six, old were you? six. What were the things you wanted when you rang the bell? More chips. <laughs> uh, a glass of orange squash. Sense of purpose in life. <laughs> was it both grandmother and grandfather that would come and wait on you hand and foot, or was it just one or the other? Uh, I was a small child. I was sort of, <laughs> I was indulged to a certain extent, but then also to a certain extent there was. Can you actually just stop ringing your bell now? <laughs> okay. So, Lee's team, what what do you think? The parents I... could easily have had a bell, and the little brat could have just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the bell. I liked ringing the bell. He liked ringing the bell. Is it true or is it a lie? <laughs> Reginald, delicious hunter. <laughs> um, well, sausage roll, I believe that... <laughs> I believe that there's a simplicity to the story that uh, rings true. I'll go with that. Go on, then. We'll say that that's true. You're saying it's true. David, is it true or is it a lie? Well, it is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, it's true. As a child, David's grandparents' house did have a little bell that he would ring if he wanted anything. 
Ding-a-ling. Uh, could I have a posher upbringing, please? <laughs> he, um... That's, that's a remarkable impression, because it has the advantage of also sounding quite a lot like Ken Livingston. I thought that was a good one. You're absolutely right. As yeah. I did it, I thought, this isn't the best David Mitchell I've ever done. Right. <laughs> if it was going to be one of the good David Mitchells, it'd be a bit more like this. I don't know why anybody would think I would do that. Why would they think that? <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> And next. <coughs> Fern. Ooh. Possession. Ah, now you have a box under the desk we'd like you to get out, please. That's it. Open it up. Mm. Yeah. This is my tea cosy. I take it absolutely everywhere with me because I can't stand a cold teapot. <laughs> um, for no reason at all. David, could you just put it on your head? <laughs> You all right? <laughs> <laughs> right, now get a big stick. George Carey! <laughs> I feel quite important. I, can I have a little bell? <laughs> if you take it everywhere, why isn't it more grubby? Ooh, is it grubby? <laughs> <laughs> How hot do you like your tea? How hot? I, I, I don't like it when you go like this. Oh! Uh, tongue's all burnt, and then the, the rest of the she day you can't you, taste man. anything. Mm -hmm. this, I understand is, this, the language this is of the, the Lee Max the scale. Burnt. Yeah. All right? Yeah. The rest but of I like humanity it, it's uses like... numbers to, you know, <laughs> temperature. You use mine. Yes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Is your tea all right? Yes, it's a number seven. <laughs> Maybe a six, I'm not sure. So, genuinely, sorry, genuinely, the idea of numbers denoting temperatures is new to you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's yes. ridiculous? Oh, yes, it temperature is. Temperature is measured in units. But you don't say it's a seven, do you? I'm talking no, you don't to the say lady, it's... not the nutter. No, you don't want a seven. <laughs> ignore the... Who would, want a, who would want a seven? Anyway, a cup of... a seven? That's horrendously so cold. <laughs> In whichever, in whichever scale. Oh. If, it's, if it's centigrade, it's too cold. If it's Fahrenheit, it's solid. <laughs> so, Lee, we need a guess, please. What do you think? Come on. Come on, man, come on. <laughs> Can you be equally cool? I think it's a lie. OK, so that's, that's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? Fern, is it true or is it a lie? It's true. Oh! <laughs> Yes, it's true. That is Fern's tea cosy, and she takes it everywhere with her because she can't stand a cold teapot. Hey, Showbiz is... really is rock and roll, isn't it? <laughs> it's stashed full of skunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show. I can reveal that tonight's score is a draw. David's team have five, and Lee's team have five. Of course, of course, it's, uh, it's not just a team game, and my individual liar of the week this week is Fern Britton. Yes. Fern Britton, whose gigantic whoppers were as beautifully showcased tonight as they were on her 2003 Pilates video. <laughs> Good night. Working with fish and, and chick tonight, but can they cut it? Blood, sweat and takeaways on the way next on BBC One. And a mower makes an unexpected friend in tonight's film, Lawn Dogs, at five past twelve. <laughs>